I quit. I was making around $120,000 straight out of college working in New York City. And I honestly thought that I made it, that I was on the right path. But after working several years in corporate America and learning these three lessons along the way, I realized that I was wrong and that I was just taking myself deeper into this hole. And before I dug so deep that I wouldn't be able to climb out of it, I decided to quit. For several years after college, I commuted one hour into the office, I worked 10 to 12 hours, and then I went back home and I slept. And I did the same routine the next day. Work, sleep. And the next day, work, sleep. And the next day, work. And I seriously thought that this was it, that for the next 16,060 days that I'd be doing this until I retired. But at least on the bright side, there were two moments every day that I look forward to. One was when I got up from my desk, went to the bathroom, and used my phone. And the other was when I got up from my desk and I walked out those doors. Then one day after watching too many motivational YouTube videos on the toilet, I realized that I had two paths before me. One path was bright, the dirt was smooth, paved and safe with lots of people walking on it. The other path was darker. The ground was rough, it was dangerous, they had rocks and it was lonelier. I know some of you guys watching right now, the highlight of your day is also when you go to the bathroom or when you leave the office and I wanna let you know that it doesn't have to be that way. So I'm making this video to share with you my experiences on what finally convinced me to switch to a different path. And I really want you guys to pay attention because I want this video to be more than just words that you see on the screen and more than just some sounds you hear coming from your speakers. So let's start here with work culture itself and how everything is based on how hard it seems like you're working and not how hard you're actually working. I remember time and time again when I had to stay in the office until 8 p.m., 9 p.m., and even past midnight sometimes in order to finish an assignment that day <laughs> as if the world was gonna implode if it wasn't finished that day. And I wasn't the only one in the office either. There were honestly a bunch of people with everyone secretly wanting to outwork the other person. And truly it was an endless toxic cycle of people bragging about how long they spent in the office, that the company paid for their dinner and their Uber ride home, which by the way, the company paid for if you stay past 9 p.m. I absolutely hated it, but it's just a thing that people did and since I wanted to belong, I, I joined in on this cycle, which probably perpetuated the cycle. And looking back, it never really stung me until one night, and I remember this very vividly. I was so frustrated at work because I realized that I had to work late. It was already, I don't know, past seven or 8 p.m. And then my phone started ringing. And I checked and I saw that my mom was calling me. And my first thought wasn't, this is nice, my mom is calling me. Um, instead, my thought was, what does she want now? I picked up the phone and she asked in the very sweet and kind, sweet mom voice, are you coming home for dinner or should I save you food? And I remember talking back to that phone and my voice was so angry and, and so annoyed as if she said something that was completely outrageous. And what I said was, no, I don't have time. And then I hung up. And after that call, believe it or not, I was still angry as if I hadn't just acted like a complete asshole to my own mom. And I just kept on working. And it wasn't until I went back home and I stepped into the door and I saw my mom. She was happy to see me. She was excited to see me. She asked me how was work. And she brought out the dinner that she saved me and that she made for me. And the only thought I had at that moment was, wow, I'm a total asshole. I chose to spend extra hours of my life so I could help finish a project to achieve their dreams over my own family. And that's when I learned my first lesson. If you don't build your dreams, then someone else will hire you to build theirs. And I realized that if I never stopped working to help someone else build their dreams, then every hour of my time, even after work, belongs to them. And because they owned my time, they owned my emotions, they owned my reactions, and they owned my relationships. And I know this might sound super extreme, but this is genuinely how I felt from doing something that was so unsatisfying every single day that it became painful. And yet even after realizing all this, it still wasn't enough to convince me to take my first step onto the darker path. I graduated from Vanderbilt University in 2017 and then I worked on finance on Wall Street and I worked on hundreds of millions of dollar projects. I worked with executives, I worked in London for half a year and I'm not gonna lie, I was super excited to get this job at first because it made me think that I made it. And what was even more exciting was the fact that I got to tell my parents that their son has a good job. Their son got paid a fantastic salary. All your sacrifices um, that you made to give us an opportunity where you left Hong Kong, um, you left your friends and family, and you came to the United States without knowing anyone, 
without speaking the language, all of that, all those sacrifices were finally worth it. But after a few months, that excited feeling I got riding up the elevator to the 27th floor disappeared. And instead, I started to dread going back to the office to do meaningless work day in and day out. And never have I ever felt like I was doing so much, putting so much time and effort into doing something. And yet I felt like I wasn't doing anything. I felt like I was just a spinning cog inside a machine, inside a bigger machine. Until one day, something happened that taught me my second lesson. Every day without fail, around 12.41 um, after lunch, I would pass this person in the hall and we can call him John. And I was friendly with John, he was like, one of those really old guys that always smiled, always seemed happy, and always had a joke to crack, and he never complained. I wasn't exactly friends with him, but we would say hi to each other in passing, we'd had small talk, um, and I always thought of John as like this model employee that every company would want to hire because super hard worker, and again, never complained about anything. Then one day he stopped showing up, and I didn't think about it very much at first. I thought he was just on vacation, but then a week went by, a month went by, and then several months went by, and still nothing. And still, to this day, I have no idea what happened to John. He could have quit, he could have been fired. What was weird was that nothing changed. Everything was exactly the same. People went to the office, people left the office. It was as if John never existed within these walls, ever. I, real, I knew in the back of my head that a company is not gonna stop running just because someone isn't there anymore, but it felt really weird to witness this firsthand that someone that you've seen every day, someone that you've interacted with every day, just disappeared and nothing changed. And that's where the second lesson clicked, that we are all replaceable, every single one of us. And this really ties back to my first lesson in that you're really only as good as the hours of life that you can give to the company. Once you can't give them any more hours or you wanna give them fewer hours, then they'll find someone else who can. This is when I felt more motivation than ever before to really start planning and strategizing on how I can change my path and start work walking onto the darker one. But it wasn't until my third lesson that I take my first step onto the other path because this is when I really thought about my entire life. When I was a kid in preschool, I would always be open to helping other people, whether it was someone at school who didn't have a toy, I'd let them play with my toy, or if I had an extra bag of Cheez-Its um, and my friends finished theirs, I'd give them some of mine. But, but as I got older, I stopped. I became a lot more selfish. And this thinking really stemmed from seeing my parents being taken advantage of um, because they couldn't speak English. And I know this because I was there when these, this situation happened. I, I was just too scared to speak up because I was just a little kid at the time. And internally, I was thinking like, I became so cynical at the entire world. The only thing on my mind was finding a job that paid me well. Because then at least if I had a good job, then I would have more leverage and I wouldn't have to rely on other people as much. Fast forward a, a couple of months or a year or so into work, while I was mindlessly working on the computer, making a presentation in PowerPoint. I don't know what I was doing. I was resizing a box to make to make it look nicer. Who, know, who knows? And at that moment, I was thinking to myself, is this it? Is this what life is all about? To create a really nice Excel model, to make a really nice PowerPoint slide. I was just thinking to myself that there has to be more. And then that's when I realized my third lesson. And this is what was missing from my career, which was a purpose. If you don't have a purpose in life, then you will be a part of someone else's purpose. And I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with not having a purpose in life, as long as you're aware of it and you've made this decision on your own. But personally, I wasn't fine with it. I wanted to do and contribute more with my life than what I was doing at the time. I wanted to rediscover the mindset that I had when I was a kid. I realized that the best way for me to do that, to use my background, my knowledge, my education, and help other people understand and teach them how they can improve their personal finance. Because despite all the sayings that money is the root of all evil, the truth is that money impacts all of us. And unless we control money, money will control us. It took me years to learn these lessons that ultimately inspired me to take the first couple of steps down the darker path. And Obviously, I was very lucky to be in that position that allowed me to do this. It took me years to finally make the plunge because I felt so much pressure internally, but also externally. Like my dad is absolutely the hardest working person that I know out there. Out of the 365 days, he would only take one day off and that was Chinese New Year to spend time the whole day with his family. And it, and it really sucked when I was younger because I, I didn't really see my dad very often. Like when I was a kid, I would be in bed pretty early and I wouldn't wake up until a little bit later. So internally for me, quitting just felt really wrong. Like it felt like it was disgraceful to my family that I couldn't hold a job or couldn't withstand my job longer than a few years. And I felt like I was being 
really ungrateful. Um, like walking away from a job that was really comfortable, had really great benefits, that so many people would love to have. But what I realized is that sticking through something that is just so deeply unsatisfying just isn't worth it. I didn't wanna be paid money to shut up, to forget about my dreams and to continue down this safe path with no other purpose than to just make money. We all have a purpose for being here today and sometimes we lose sight of that. And sometimes it's different from what you're doing and you wanna be doing something else but you're not trying because it's scary to go down that darker, more dangerous path. We let fear stop us from going after our dreams. We get worried about being uncomfortable or failing or just the lifestyle choices we made in the past prevents us from taking that plunge. We get sucked into what society expects us to do, which is to get a job, to buy a really nice car, to buy a nice house, because other people have nice cars and other people have nice houses. We want other people to accept us because we care about what other people think over our own happiness. At some point in your life, impressing other people that you really don't care about it's not worth it. It's not worth it getting locked into golden handcuffs that gets harder to break free with each additional big purchase that you make. But honestly, I had my job to thank for allowing me to learn these lessons because without going through this for years, these lessons would have just became some quote that I read online somewhere or some words that I've heard from another random YouTube video. And honestly, it wouldn't have meant anything to me. So now I'm on this dark path and I'm trying to pursue my purpose, my reason, why I'm here. And that's really why I created this YouTube channel to be able to help other people understand personal finance, investing, entrepreneurship, and being able to help break down all the complexities of that in a fun and entertaining way where it's easy to understand because if there's one thing that the education system failed for all of us and it's understanding the power of money and personal finance. Because the real power of money is not that you can buy whatever you want. The real power is that you're able to buy the freedom to spend your time how you like, when you like, where you like. It's the freedom to not let anyone else control your time, your emotions, or your life. And if you wanna hear about what I'm experiencing right now, yes, I'm scared. I'm scared of failing. I'm scared of disappointing my parents who sacrificed so much for me to go to college, to get a job. And if I fail, it feels like I'm throwing all of that away. Um, I'm scared of not making it even though I'm giving it my all. But despite all these fears, there's one thing I'm even more scared of and that is to not try. And I'm scared of regret. I'm scared of not taking this opportunity that's before me um, and not trying to make something out of it. I'm scared of not being able to use my education and my background and help others who absolutely need it. But I'm here now, I'm walking on this path, and for those of you who are still watching, I wanna let you guys know that it's okay to be scared. You can't grow unless you're uncomfortable, until you're scared. And when you join me on this path, I wanna let you know that you're gonna constantly feel like you can't do it. Like there's literally gonna be people who will tell you that you're gonna fail, and that's completely okay. What's worse than failing is not trying when you really, really want to. And if you're not ready to try, that's okay too. But Take this time now to start planning, to start strategizing on how you can take that next step. Don't lose sight of your why and your reason. And if you're asking, when is the best time to start taking this plunge? The answer is, there is no best time. You have to take the jump when you can afford to drown.